And the third is our universities, which has been my biggest challenge. I watched Congresswoman Stefanik's questions, and I was part of, you know, this was not a, a partisan effort. There was a bipartisan group of legislators, both Democrat and Republican, that brought people to committee. And I saw the disastrous testimony of Harvard, MIT, and Penn. And so often I will copy my American colleagues. I brought a motion to our Justice Committee, which is our Judiciary Committee, to have a study on anti-Semitism focused on university anti-Semitism. So far, for some partisan reasons, my colleagues across the aisle have been holding it up, but I'm confident it'll pass this week. But what I'd like to do is as opposed to focus on embarrassing university presidents that have done a bad job, I want to bring in the university presidents that have done a good job and ask them what they've done to stem anti-Semitism on their campus. How can other university presidents learn from them? I've spoken way too much over the last little while. I've become like the ombudsman in Canada for students at universities who are having a tough time. I've gone in and spoken at Hillel's across the country. But now I'm getting emails from people in Saskatchewan, in Manitoba, in British Columbia, in Nova Scotia, asking me to speak to their university professors or university presidents. And so I took five members of the House, and we wrote to the biggest university presidents in Canada. And we asked them pointed questions about whether or not calling for the genocide against Jews was a violation of university codes of conduct. All of the 29 biggest universities in Canada answered that yes, it was. We got them on record. We got them on record on a number of things that they've all committed to do. But now, they have to follow through. And I think that the one message I convey would convey, because this has become a big subject of debate, there's the argument about free speech and whether or not telling people on university campuses to uphold standards of decency is a violation of the First Amendment in the United States or the Second Amendment in Canada. And what I would say is freedom of speech guarantees you that you will not be criminally held responsible for things that you say. It doesn't mean that every workplace in the country and every university needs to tolerate conduct that would not be tolerated in normal, polite society. If you went to your company and you walked around screaming, death to Jews, death to Jews, I don't think you'd stay as an employee very long. And the same is true at college campuses. People should not have the inability to sit quietly and study in the library without having people yelling hateful things at them. They should be allowed to go to class without having people barricade the building and make them swear they're not Zionists before they walk in. And many of our universities are not upholding their own codes of conduct that they themselves have adopted. And this is where government has some role. I have moral suasion. I have the power of the pulpit. But university presidents need to lead. Donors need to lead. And this is where we can all pitch in, because I think the people who are at the greatest danger are our kids on campus.